All right, man. Let's talk about all of the off-season rumors that I can find as I'm waiting for the next game of the finals here. Let's start with DeAndre Ayton. And uh, real quick, you can't just let him walk for nothing if you're Phoenix. Even if you really are like, we do not feel comfortable with giving this guy a max contract, he can't leave for nothing. You, you cannot allow another team to just give him the offer sheet you don't match, and that's that. So there is a chance that they simply match his contract because they can't find a perfect sign-and-trade, and then he's on the team next season, and then as far as what happens by the deadline of next season or the offseason of the, you know, after next season, I don't know. But speaking of a sign-and-trade, doing a sign-and-trade for Aiton is, like, super weird because of some CBA mumbo-jumbo about it would be, like, half of his salary going to the other team, but you'd still have to get the full amount of money in the deal. It's really complicated. So before I rattle off just a couple of random trade ideas, just know that it is not a walk in the park to find a DeAndre Ayton trade. With that being said, I believe the ideal return for Ayton would be a center that can fill in and be good. And also at least one guy who I feel like can be another offensive option with CP and Book, especially if he can do something himself and not just have to play off of those two the entire time, right? And before even that, can I just say... If you were going to look to move your 23-year-old first overall pick to maximize the team that has a 37-year-old Chris Paul, it's just kind of a wild situation to be in. Doesn't mean it can't work, especially if you get like some really good young talent back. I'm just It's just kind of wild that we're potentially here. Anyway, among the teams rumored, we've got the Spurs, the Pistons, I've seen the Mavericks, I've seen the Trailblazers. The most interesting return that I've seen brought up amongst the rumored teams is uh, Keldon Johnson and Jakob Pertl for Aiton. If you're a Spurs fan, I can understand being like, nah, we're good. Because listen, Keldon Johnson, year three, 17 points a game. I call him a battering ram going to the rim. His three got better. Pertl's one of the best rim protectors in the league. Just a good all-around center. So much of this just comes down to what you think Aiton's ceiling is, man. If one front office believes that he can be one of the best bigs in the league by being featured more in offense, then who knows what a move looks like. By the way, the Spurs do have cap space, so if the Suns were crazy enough to just let Aiton walk for nothing, then if you could pull that off, then way to go San Antonio. Again, that would be a disaster for Phoenix. And so after that, I'm looking at, you know, the Pistons. Jeremy Grant would probably have to be in the move. I guess if you really believe that he was a reliable third option next to CP and Booker, but to me, with how his playmaking and his efficiency have gone when the Pistons have put more on his plate offensively, just don't love it. And it's just kind of like that across the board. Although the OG Ananobi random report idea, I don't even know if it was really a report, that's a little interesting as well. I have a similar feeling with him as I do Keldon. It's also very fair to be like, I do not want to give up OG Ananobi plus stuff for DeAndre Ayton. I've seen Indiana talked about a bit with something between Miles Turner, the sixth pick, Malcolm Brogdon, Chris Duarte. Not all of that would be moving. Brogdon and Turner have injury concerns themselves. There's also been a little thing about the Hornets. And that one's kind of awkward because I like Terry Rozier and the Suns do need some more creation. I'm not sure if getting it out of a 6-1 guard when you've already got Booker and CP is the best way to go about it. Yeah, P.J. Washington's probably in the deal along with the 13th pick. Is Gordon Hayward the guy moving instead? I don't know. Anyway, on to the Jazz. So Quinn Snyder's out. The Woj tweet about Donovan Mitchell being surprised by the Quinn Snyder thing. That was just a weird tweet. Because whoever gave that information to Woj, there's no way that they told him that, not thinking it was going to go out to the world. So anyway, allow me to start the Jazz part of this with a hot take. There's a chance Mitchell and Gobert are on the Jazz next season. With that said, the assets around those two, Clarkson, Bogdanovich, Conley, given his age, they've moved a good amount of their draft picks, is not great. I don't think Nikhil Alexander-Walker is going to bring back something like that awesome, right? So anyway... Then you get into the Mitchell Gobert stuff. Should Miami go all in for Mitchell if he really wants out? Yes. With that being said, uh, with Tyler Hero as the main piece going back to Utah in this hypothetical deal, it's tough to get there with how rough of a playoffs Hero just had. And yeah, there were some games missed with injuries. I get all that, but I just don't like it that much for Utah at this moment. People want to talk about the Knicks. To me, if RJ Barrett's in the deal then I'm at least listening. If he's not in the deal, I'm not listening at all. But if he does want out, it's not just going to be the Heat or the Knicks who could get him. I mean, he's in his mid-20s. He's under contract for a while. Who's to say that somebody out of left field doesn't trade for the dude? 
possibly one of the teams I mentioned in this video for somebody else. As far as Gobert, I mean, I would love to see him playing with Luka, but while Dallas does have a lot of tradable contracts, I just don't think there's anything there where the Jazz are like, sign me up. There was a Gobert to the Bulls rumor that popped up today, with it centered around Vooch and Patrick Williams, who combined for about $30 million. If I'm the Jazz, I'm not that excited about that, because in the case of Vooch, I mean, he's fine, but do I really think of him as a foundational piece of my team for the next however many seasons? No. Do I think I'm going to get an amazing return in flipping him? Also, no. In the case of Patrick Williams, I mean, there's potential there, no doubt about it, as a big defender who's had moments of, like, being awesome from mid-range, and you hope that that stretches out to three and all that. Like, Patrick Williams is a good asset. I'm going to need a lot more if I'm Utah to give up the guy who's been getting me to the playoffs every year by single-handedly making me the best or one of the best defenses in the league. And that mentality right there is why the Go Bear trade stuff is so weird between his contract, what he means to the Jazz, how another team's going to view him, how much they have to give up. There's also been some Raptors noise for Go Bear. I don't think they would move Siakam or Van Vliet. And so just talking strictly money, the only way it's possible is if it's Ananobi and Gary Trent. Would the Raptors want to rock the boat that hard? Would the Jazz be okay with that? I don't know. Atlanta has been rumored a little bit for Gobert. I think between Capella having a not as good season this previous year, DeAndre Hunter's injuries, Kevin Herter has never really taken off. I don't know if that's because he's just not good enough to do it or they don't lean on him enough as a scorer like that. I can't really find the move, which is the most on-brand thing I could say to end a trade speculation video.